Let me get everybody's attention real quick. We'll get started here in just a second. Now you notice we got some cameras. We got one right there, we got one right there, we got one on the uh, selfie stick. This stuff is going live, y'all, because we know this, number one, this is about y'all guys. Our target audience, and we'll talk about this, is 13 to 22-year-olds. And I believe, because I've got two sons about that age, living a lot of time out on social media. How many of y'all go out to YouTube, spend a little time out on YouTube? Okay, there you go. Yeah, all right, it's YouTube. How about some Instagram? Got a little bit of Instagram? Yeah, yeah. Maybe a little Twitter followers, got a little Twitter feed? Yeah, okay. Especially some of y'all athletes, kind of, you know, what's going on at the game and so forth. Uh, Facebook, anybody doing Facebook? Okay, got some Facebook, maybe not as many. How about LinkedIn? Anybody ever heard about LinkedIn? I know for y'all guys, if I, ah, that's for them old folks right there. We'll talk a little bit about that, but we're going LinkedIn, so I think we're going to get cranked up here and just, uh, I think we're just about ready. So let's see here. All right, so with that being said, is have, have a lot of fun. We are videotaping. This is in front of a live studio audience. Y'all hear that a lot of times, right? Filmed in front of a live studio audience. Well, that's what we got going on. All right, I think we're ready to lunch. Y'all think we're ready? Let's get this thing going. All right. My name is Jeff Coggin, but I go by Cog. That's kind of my thing. I'm a retired Air Force guy. Last name's Coggin, so Cog, Coggin. So that's kind of who I am. Now here's what, everybody knows what a Cog is, right? Those little Cogs, kind of like in a machine, kind of turns these other gears. Y'all seen that? That's all I am. I'm just trying to bring information, connect y'all to people you need to know, because here's what I know. Past three years, I've been teaching high school, Air Force, Junior RTC, who are my warriors out there, over in North Mississippi. That's where I grew up, outside Tupelo, a town called Aberdeen, Aberdeen Bulldogs. And you know what? I found some the most amazing young folks who were just kind of like me, though, when they were growing up. They didn't have a, a big idea on what they wanted to do. Some of y'all already got figured out, know exactly what you're doing, but a lot of us are just kind of trying to figure out who am I, what am I passionate about, how am I going to get there, how am I going to pay for it, and it's tough. We asked y'all guys at 18, and all, how many of y'all, all of y'all seniors, do you have any non-seniors, anybody not seniors in here, a few of y'all? All right, well that's even better. If you're not seniors, this is even better because you need to be hearing this stuff early, early, early. Now y'all already know about vet school, and you know about the medical and all that. Y'all hear about a lot of y'all's parents are into that. What we're trying to do here at CareerQuest is bring y'all stuff that you don't hear about every day. We are real big into airspace, and some of y'all go, ah, I don't want to fly, I don't do any of that. We got a lot more to airspace than just that. Cybersecurity, y'all know folks are trying to hack in, trying to get our information, trying to take down all the good stuff we're trying to do. Huge, tons of opportunity, right here in Alabama. And then there's a lot of other things you don't know about, and we want to bring that to you. So that's what we are, CareerQuest USA. We're going to help you explore who you are, what you want to do, help you get the skill set so you can compete with that little Janie from Korea, little Bobby from Europe, because guess what? This is a big old world and you're competing with everybody. And y'all know that. It's not just making County. So we're trying to give y'all some information there. Okay, so we do things. We want to help you find out what you're passionate about, you may already know, help you get in the right opportunity, and that means maybe some education, maybe some military, maybe some training, and at the end of the day, for the right reasons, because yes, money's pretty important, right? But do y'all think money is the most important thing when it comes to selecting a career? Some people say, yeah, it's all about the money, I just wanna make as much as I can, and I, I understand that, I know how it is, but at the end of the day, you gotta get up every morning excited about what you're doing, because how many of y'all know people get up every day and go, I hate what I'm doing, I might be making good money, but I'm stuck in a rut, I hate it, I hate it. My dad said it every day, and I've kinda of been there occasionally myself, Y'all know some folks like that? Oh yeah. At the end of the day, if you don't get up every morning, whether they pay you or not, you wanna be able to get up and say, I wanna do what I'm doing because I love it. Whether it's I'm an athlete, whether it's I'm an actor, whether it's I'm a nurse, whether it's I'm a vet, I love this. But you know what? I can't answer what you love. Your, next, your best friend can't answer it. Your mom, your dad, aunt, grandparents, the only person can answer that's who? You. Yeah. And here's the problem. That means you gotta get some time with yourself. And I, I used to sell this. I love my cell phones and all this, but this stuff keeps us way away from ourselves. We, we're worried about too much about everybody else. So what I'd say is this, unplug, spend some time with yourself, sit down and say, who am I? What does I wanna do seriously? All right, so that's kinda what we do. We got four things we do. Artworks, I got any artists in here? Anybody who just, whether you're an artist or a great, great sum, I guarantee there's some talent folks. Now, I, I hear that, I don't know if y'all, y'all have an art program here at high school? 
And I know, hey, hey, we know that because a lot of the art programs are being cut because it's all about STEM, right? Science, technology, engineering, engineering, mathematics. But do y'all think art is important? Absolutely. Uh, my young partner up there, and if everybody turn around, let's give this guy, his name is Stephen Parsons. This guy just graduated from college in May. Was a college swimmer down in Daytona State, down in Florida, went up into Tennessee, swam, got a degree in communications, liberal arts, guys big into digital media. But, but you know, a lot of times they go, ah, you're not an engineer, this, that, and the other. We know you got to know how to think. You know, you got to be able to work together as a team. You got to be able to be creative. That's what art teaches. So we're big. So if you are into art, check out our website, send me an email because we want to help you because we've got an art studio we just opened in Auburn. We've got artists from down the Gulf Coast, up at, and what we're trying to do is help promote young artists. We want to get your work out in front of shows. We want to get you connected on social media. So if you're an artist, give me a holler. Let's talk. Career cohort. How many of y'all go into classes and you, you study, you take a test, and then you go away, you take tests, you make 100, and then you forget everything you learned? You done that? I, yeah, I've done that too. It's all about taking your learning and putting it to some real world challenges, right, and applying it. If you want to be a doctor or a nurse, you need to work on medical issues. If you're learning biology, you need to be able to use that. So the career cohort, we're trying to get young folks, get some real world issues kind of going out. We're working right now with a group, we're starting to talk to, who works in Uganda. Everybody know where Uganda's at? Over in Africa. And they have got a lot of projects over there that need some of y'all smart folks to figure it out. And I know y'all are powerful and can do it, so we're trying to figure out how do we tie your biology and math and science to something that solves real world problems. That sound pretty good to y'all? All right. Career wise, now that's what brings us here today. We want you to be wise on all kind of careers, and we are very fortunate. I'm going to turn it over to my, my partner up here, and he's going to introduce our guest speakers. But we want to come back to Booker T, because we here, we are the best folks in here. Class 2016 is in the house. There you go. There you go. You're here. And we know, like I said, we, we, we could have went to a lot of different locations, but you know what? I think God kind of puts us in places where we need to be at, and this is right where we need to be, because together we're going to kind of move forward together. So with that being said, Stephen's going to come up and talk to you about our guest speakers, and then we have this thing called True Careers, and that helps you figure out, hey, who am I, what I want to do, and we'll talk more about that. So LT, that's his nickname, because remember, I'm an Air Force guy. Some of y'all cadets know what LT stands What's LT stand for? Lieutenant. He, he's my lieutenant. Now, he's a smart guy. I'm learning from him, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to my LT, and he's going to open this thing up. All right. So, Cog introduced me a little bit, but I'm going to say a little bit more. My name is Stephen Parsons. I was born and raised in Auburn, Alabama, just down the road. Like he said, I graduated from Daytona State Community College, basically that's Southern Union on the beach. I don't know how much better it can get from that. Um, I went to Daytona because I didn't really know what I wanted to do yet, but I knew that I could swim and I wanted to get paid for it, so that's where I went. After that, I went to a small school in East Tennessee, similar to Sanford, called Carson Newman University. Division II, real small. Um, I started a program there with my teammates and we took a big all the way to the national level. But there I was able to get a degree in communications. Um, I've learned a lot through the years about how social media and phones make us smart and dumb. But my goal with career-wise, like Cog says, is we want to give you information that you may not know about. When I was growing up, there was, you could be a doctor, you could be a lawyer, you could be an engineer, you could be a match of all those things, but some of those options that you don't know are available to you are just around the corner. And so my job right now is a communications major. I want to find the best way to approach this information to you. I want to put it in your hands the best way I know how. I get it, I'm 22, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, I know all about those different types of things, but I want to get it to you the best way you know how, whether it's YouTube, or just fat checks or a website. So at the end of the day today, I want to know more about what you need to know to be about a future career. If you want to be in animal science or doctors or anything out there, if you want to be in construction, science, it could be liberal arts, if you want to be a librarian, it doesn't matter. I want to know what you want to know about. So on the end of the day today, come up on the blackboard, take the marker and write down something that you would like to know about and I'll make it my mission to put out on our social media outlets so you can have that information, okay? So additionally, if you've got a phone or a tablet whenever you're not blocked from school's Wi-Fi, because I know how that is, get on our social media, like us, follow us and let us know what we can do to put this information in your hands. Okay, thank you. What we're going to do is turn it around to we've got Ryan Jones 
and Dale from AIM Atlanta. It's the Aviation Institute of Maintenance, and they're going to tell you about their aviation career programs they have available on their campus. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to them. Now I can work on airplanes. I can't get a mic on my, on my shirt here. Okay, let me introduce myself first of all. Uh, I'm Del Key. Uh, I'm with the Aviation Institute of Maintenance. Basically, we train people to work on airplanes. My background really goes back to the military. I was in the Army. I was a helicopter maintenance test pilot, maintenance officer. Uh, we repaired the planes that needed maintenance, got shot down, whatever. You know, I've been in this a long time. I became an AMP mechanic, which is airframe and power plant. It allows me to work on airplanes back in 1975. And I've got to tell you, the last 10 years have been some of the most exciting that I've seen in the industry. There's been a lot of things changing. What's the presenter? Oh. Back when I started working on these things, this is what the inside of an airplane would look like. It's all analog. Just needles and gauges. Uh, that's what we learned to fly by. Today, back the analog instruments, you had your airspeed indicator, alt altimeter, things that told you what the plane was doing. But it was all things that you had to read out digital or in an analog manner. This is what we have today. It's what is called an all-glass cockpit. Everything's LCD like your TV at home. It multitasks. You can have all kinds of things loaded into, into that to do whatever uh, you want to do for IFR flying, that's instrument flying. This is 60 te technology. That stuff's still flying today, a lot of the 60s. This was a Boeing 707. That was the workhorse at one time has an aluminum structure. It's riveted together. It uses manual control systems, which are things like cables and pulleys. And a hydraulic system. All of these things limit how a plane can be built. They have to be made structurally so they can be rooted properly to the specific controls. Today, you've got the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. This is a composite construction. It's exotic materials held together with basically glue. It can be made into any form. And it's fly-by-wire. What does that mean? Basically, it's electrical wires running to the controls. Each control has its own separate unit to activate those controls. It uses an electronic interface, basically something similar to uh, what goes into your cell phone or into your computer. And it allows them to build this in almost any configuration they want. They no longer have to worry about where are we going to run that hydraulic tube or where are we going to run that cable or where are we going to put that pulley. And soon, Virgin Galactic commercial air flight. They're already booking people to go into space. And this isn't the government. These are private individuals and it's going to take people to work on these things. This here we're hiring. This is just on Twitter. I pulled it off yesterday. Found on Twitter for Virgin Galactic. They're currently hiring for their space shuttle. UAVs. Now, I'm sure all of you have heard about UAVs. That's basically an unmanned aerial vehicle. What do they do? Well, there are military applications, such as the Predator drone. There's a company called General Atomics out in California. They build the Predator. They uh, build the uh, Reaper. There's a number of ones that they build. You watch the news at night, you'll quite often hear about them. This is a military application, and it's expanding rapidly. Then there's civilian applications, such as package delivery for Amazon, pizza delivery for Domino's, aerial photography, and virtually anything you can think of. This would be the Predator. And 
And then you have your commercial drones, Amazon, and Domino's. And they plan on uh, implementing this as soon as they get FAA approval. At AIM, we, we still have a need for those people to work on the old technology. There are still a lot of planes out there flying that are aluminum and rivets and pulleys and cables. But we're moving into the future also with composites and electronics and avionics. We're aiming at the future and right now you guys are at an ideal point in your lives because right now currently FAA is revamping a lot of their rules and the way they change rules. They just cannot change things fast enough to stay up with the way the industry is changing, with the demands that are being required, what we have to teach in our schools. We're looking at new programs every day and as they become approved, we plan on teaching them. And I'll turn this over. And, and so what I'm going to talk about real quickly, a little bit about what your, your life is going to look like after high school, because you got a lot of great information already. Did you guys know that you have six options after high school? Six options. I'm about to say, who said that? What's your name? What is it? Azalea. Azalea. Here you go, your six options after high school. Some of you will go to a four-year college, which will take you five plus years to graduate. <laughs> I was on a seven-year plan. It took me seven years to graduate. The second thing that you're going to do, some of you will go to a community college. Hey, it's available. Some of you will go to a career college, number three. That's what we're here. I'm here from a career college. I'll talk a little bit about what we do. Four, military. Some of you guys may elect to go into the military. I salute all of you who have the uniforms on. Fifth, some of you will go straight to work right out of high school. And number six, nothing. That's it. Those are your six options after high school. So it is up to you to decide on what you are going to do after high school. There is life after high high school. Let me tell you a little bit about who we are. I got three slides. I promise you I'll be done. And then I might throw a little bit of something in there. I want to, can, I, can I encourage you guys today? Yes, yes. Can I just say something today to just help move you to the next level? Yes. All right, I'll do that. So here's some of the features and benefits of attending a career college. Because let's be real. Can I be real for a second? Everybody in this room, I know you have dreams, goals, and aspirations to go to a four-year college, but let's be real. <laughs> if you looked at your grade point average, some of us may not go to a four-year college. However, there are options. So here's some of the features and benefits from going to our school. Number one, we are the largest aviation maintenance technical career school in the nation. We have small classrooms, which means you have about, what, no more than 25 students in the classroom, okay? Flexible schedule, day and evening, short-term programs. All of our programs are less than two years. So it's not going to take you forever to graduate, okay? Dedicated and qualified instructors, all right? Believe it or not, Dale was one of the instructors at our school. He's now the director of education, but he was one of the instructors. Career placement assistance, what that means is we will help you get the necessary tools that you need so that you can get that job. We will help you dress for success. We will help you do interviews. We'll even help you with your resume so that when you leave school, you are placed in your career field. And lastly, financial aid is available for those who qualify, which I want to touch on real quickly. We just implemented this. This is brand new that we implemented. We're doing a scholarship match program, which simply means if you go out and get a scholarship for $1,000, guess what? Who said it? What'd you say? We're matching. We're matching. It's just that simple. You get a $1,000 scholarship, we're matching. Now, here's the caveat to that or the catch. We're not giving it to you to go to another school. You have to come to us. All right? 
So that's what we do. That's 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 what we, we want to make sure that you guys are getting what you need, because here again, let's be real. I, I'm not as a as a community outreach representative from the aviation school. My job is not to recruit anybody in this room. My job is to provide you with options. <laughs> and a lot of times we don't know what our options are because everybody is th thinking about going to a four year school. And Carl talked about it at the beginning. You guys have these, these there are other op opportunities. Oh, you are wonderful. <laughs> I didn't take my medicine this morning, that's why. And so there's some wonderful opportunities available to each and every one of you. And so I want to, can I just real quickly, just, just by way of, so let me say this, number one. If you are interested, interested in getting some information about our school, OK, Aviation Institute of Maintenance, we're located in Atlanta, really just north of Atlanta. But if you're interested in getting some information, I have here a couple things. Number one, I have my business card. Number two, I have one of these. It's got some information here. Please take one. I've got plenty. And then I will want you to complete one of these cards so that my coworker can get in touch with you. Because at some point, probably later on during spring break or something like that, we have what we call a jet tech camp. And the jet tech camp is that we want to invite you and your family to come to our campus and spend the day with us during our jet tech camp. It's a lot of fun. You get an opportunity to see what's going on, see the planes in the hangar and probably if the weather permits, uh, we may take one of the planes back out on the back, back park a lot and let you Drive it around. Not by yourself, though. <laughs> oh, no. But you may get that. <laughs> yeah, some of y'all like, yeah, I want to. No, no, no. You may get an opportunity to, to take the plane around the, the, the back parking lot. Remember, if you're interested in aviation or just learning some more about our school, I, I will, you can come get one of these cards and fill it out real quickly. And uh, we'll have somebody to get in touch with you. I've also got some brochures and some other information. Yes? Is there any way to kind of explain to them how it could tie in once they leave the um, Let me say something really about the community college. Guys, if you look at the community college, it's going to, I, I, I guess when we get the mic, uh, the so. Yeah, so the community college issue, if you're going to go to the community college, here's a couple things I want you to understand. It helps boost your GPA, number one. A lot of times students don't realize that's what it's there for. It also, you, it help, will help you define your major on what you want to major in at a four-year school. I was on, I told you I was a seven year plan. You don't want to go to school seven years. So define your major. What we do is we, we offer hands on training in the industry, in the airline industry, where you are working, learning pretty much how to work on an aircraft. But the other thing, and I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dale, is if we have what we do, that turbine engine that's in the warehouse, in the, in the hangar. It's a huge engine. That thing is huge. 6'9", that thing is like almost twice as me. All right? But I think, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, turbine engines not only operate airplanes, but they also operate cruise ships as well as trains. So if you learn how to work on a turbine engine, you have the option of not just working for airline, but as well of train or uh, ship. Correct? Okay, so those are some of the things. So here again, the career placement assistance. We offer career placement assistance where we will help you with the tools that you need so that you can go out and you can get that career. Now, I, I need your help on this. The other thing is if you decide to come to aviation and you go into that field, you also have to become a certified aviation mechanic, right? Because I, I think a lot of students just come and they just they take the class and they, and they pass and they do well and all that other stuff, but then there's that certification behind it. So you have to become certified. And so once you once pretty much once you get into the industry and working and, and, and you start making that money, you get hired on with a major airline, 
and you can make some really good money doing what you do. But you look at your options. Look at your options. Never, young people, please do not close the door on your options. Okay? Do not do that. I was the first one in my family to go to college. Don't close the door on your options.